we're going to tackle the install of the rear dual caliper bracket from FDF. Just quickly talking through the steps that are necessary. You're going to have to get rid of the OEM e-brake cable. You're going to take the OEM caliper off. You're going to take the brake rotor off. You're going to have to take the hub off. Once all that stuff is removed, you get access to the heat shield. The heat shield comes off and the dual caliper bracket from FDF takes the heat shield's place. Once that's there, everything goes back together and you can now bolt on a Willwood caliper uh, to serve as your dedicated caliper for your hydro. It's 95 degrees today, almost 100% humidity, so I'm disgusting and sticky and gross and uh, probably a couple more minutes in the garage away from a heat stroke, so I'll try to have a lot of the mechanical components in the video and not so much me to not gross you guys out. Let's go through this step by step. The wheel speed sensor cable, you can just unclip from this bracket by hand. Then you'll want a 10 millimeter bit. To take the bracket off that holds your wheel speed sensor cable and your OEM e-brake cable right here. There is another 10 millimeter on the cable right here that I just can't get to with my impact. You'll want some needle nose pliers to depress the detents on this cable to get it out of the rear brake caliper. And then uh, the stock e-brake cable comes out. There are a couple more 10 millimeter and 13 millimeter fasteners on the underbody of the car that ultimately lead to the other end of the cable where it goes to the distribution block which is welded to the bottom of the trans tunnel and same thing you know all these connectors have the ears that you depress pull the cables out get the cable out of their uh, brackets and just undo these on both sides and then you can undo the e-brake uh, with three fasteners inside the car and then the whole spiel just comes out the top once you disconnect all those cables. So now it's time to undo the brake caliper which you need an 18 millimeter socket for and there's two fasteners one on the top one on the bottom. At least on my car uh, these 18 millimeters were super tight uh, they have the factory Loctite on them, and they were a real joy to get out. I hate to do this, but I had to resort to a non-power tool impact. Once you were victorious and got both of the 18s out, You can pull off the caliper and I would just zip tie it to the sway bar, that way it stays out of the way. Brake rotor comes off, set that aside. So now you'll notice that there's the heat shield and this heat shield is going to come off and uh, the new hydro bracket is going to take its place. This thing is held on with three eight millimeter heads. So before you can get into removing the hub, just remember to pull out the wheel speed sensor. Also, 8 millimeter. And then it just pulls out to the top and set it off to the side for now. Now, you won't be able to see this super well in the video, but you will see it in person when you're working on this. This silhouette in your bracket matches the silhouette of the wheel hub. So, you obviously can't get this over the hub, 
<laughs> so you need to take the hub off the car, bolt this bracket on, and then put the hub back. And there are four bolts using 15 millimeter heads uh, that hold the hub to the car. And of course you have the axle nut. So I'm going to show you today my preferred order that you do this in to make your life easier. Because one thing you'll notice when you work on this is that those 15 millimeter bolt heads that are accessible only from the back here, of course, uh, are kind of a bear to get to with the axle in place, you know? So if you are smart about the order of operation, you're giving yourself more room to work with. And I'll show you that right now. The axle nut has castellations. What I would suggest in between those castellations, I put a little dab of lithium grease on all four. And in theory, that should help when you're loosening the nut to lubricate it on its way out. The other thing is that, uh, I use a little wire brush to just get rid of the majority of the crud on the four bolts that mount the hub to the knuckle because I just want to make my job here as easy as possible. So we'll clean those up. And I also like to put a dab of lithium grease onto the exposed threads. That way, as you're going through the corroded cast iron of the hub, you're actually going to get some lubrication to aid you in your quest. All right, order of operations to make this the easiest. Start out with your impact. I'm using a 32 millimeter socket. Um, seems to fit. Didn't bother to look it up. So I'm just operating under the assumption that this is a 32 millimeter axle nut. There we have the axle nut, and you can still see some of that lithium grease that I put in between those little cancellations to help the threads not seize on their way out. Okie dokie. So now, and this may seem a little counterintuitive, while the hub is still bolted in place, what I suggest you do is that you grab a puller, a two chaw, three chaw, whatever you've got laying around, in my case, it's a two chop puller here. On the other hub, other side of the car, the spline was super tight. On this one, the spline on the axle does not appear to be tight at all. Basically what I'm doing is I'm using the puller, instead of pulling the hub out because it's still bolted onto the knuckle, I'm using it to push the axle inward. Okay, and that looks good. Looks like there's virtually no more spline engagement left at this point. So this did two things. One, it helped me break the connection of the spline. Um, and two, it pushed the axle out of the way which gives us clearance to work on those four 15 millimeter heads that I mentioned. And at least on my car, much like the 18s for the brake caliber, these are an absolute pain in the rear. Yeah, this is not my definition of fun. The wheel bearing on the passenger side, despite being a fairly new car, is completely whooped. So in the course of this, I'm actually putting a new wheel bearing on. So something to check out if you're already doing this job, the wheel hubs have to come off 
might be a good point in time to change them. And it's a Ford, so of course they're cheap. So you might as well just go ahead and do that. I'm pretty sure this is still the factory hub that the car came with. So the torques that they used on these are just insanely unpleasant. I would say these four fasteners for the hubs are by far the biggest hurdle you're gonna face. Either swivel sockets, swivel extensions, swivel joints. You'll need some type of swivel to get to these in my opinion, so just be prepared for that. Victory is mine! So with the hub removed, uh, the axle actually has enough clearance that you can conveniently retrieve, retrieve the four fasteners for the hub because while the axle and the hub are still on there, these are really tricky to get out. Heck, they're tricky to get out when it's all the way moved out of the way. There we go. Naturally, as with any car, there's quite a bit of fretting, corrosion, and dirt built up in here. So, using a wire brush to clean up the spline a little bit. Clean up the interface, the pilot diameter of where the hub's gonna go. And that should be all right. This is the back side of the brand new hub. And now you can see that it has that same profile, basically, as your bracket. So first things first, now that you cleared your knuckle, you can reuse the three itty bitty little fasteners, the eight millimeter heads that held on the heat shield. And you can use these to hold in place the FDF bracket. And I would not actually torque these down. I would just use these hand tight for now. You'll see, I'll explain why later. But literally just put the bolts in there loose. And you want the webbing to be facing you. So on the other side of this, there is a little FDF logo machined into the aluminum. So you want that facing the other way. Okili, okili. So like I said, Keep these loose for now, there's no need to crank it down on these just yet, and I'll show you why in a second. Position the hub in here, and this will go over the spline, fit right into the FDF bracket. And uh, this essentially will allow the bracket to load against both the fasteners as well as the hub itself. So now comes the fun part of trying to get all these hub bolts back in from the rear. And on my car, I feel like I've got an OEM and an aftermarket axle in the car. I'm not sure which one's which, but I can see that the actual um, the axles are different diameters. So I'm not sure if the CV joints are the same size on both sides, I'm not sure. Um, so on your car, maybe this is easier, I'm not sure. On mine, it's been an absolute delight uh, to get these fasteners in here. I'm so sweaty, I can barely put my gloves on. But, oh 
Oh well. Okay, so I got a dab of anti-seize on the bolt. Now I'm gonna try to get this sucker started in here. Yeah, I have to say on the side where I used a brand new wheel hub, this job's a lot easier. So, highly recommend putting fresh hubs on your car while you're doing this job. I'd keep all four of them loose until all four of them are in there. Um, this is hard enough as it is, you don't need the hub binding on you. If you took it easy and tightened them down in multiple steps, uh, especially when you're using a new hub that has no corrosion on the interface, then uh, they probably pulled nice and flush to the knuckle. So then you just gotta make sure that you torque the ever living bejesus out of these things. But the bracket's still intentionally loose. So what I wanna do when I torque this down is that I think about which way the bracket gets loaded in and of course you know you're gonna drive the car forward and it's going to act on your secondary brake caliper on um, looking at it from the angle we got set up right now it's gonna look at it clockwise like this so it's gonna want to push this down so I'm going to hold this down while I torque it so that I take up all the clearance that I can take out as much as possible in the direction that the thing is going to be loaded in the application and hopefully that'll help make these itty bitty bolts not shear or break loose or whatever but uh, if they were to give um, the bracket would just make contact with the hub. But we'll see how this works out. Put a dab of anti-seize on the axle. Now I'm gonna throw the axle nut on there. Um, I didn't look up the torque specs for it yet, but for starters, I'm just gonna use the impact anyway. Basically, I just got it down until the axle no longer moves, and then I worry about the torque specs later. Brake rotor goes back on, and so I don't have to fight the caliper. I'm just going to put a lug nut on one of the studs. so. That the brake rotor doesn't give me any grief basically. Time to cut the zip tie off the caliper, get the caliper back on. There we go. And of course, as per usual. Put a dab of anti-seize on the caliper bolt as well. I have to say that when it comes to working on the rear suspension and the brakes on the S550, pretty much everything is remarkably awful to access and work on. So it makes me kind of miss working on the blue car a little bit. This I do not enjoy. Calipers tight. Plug the wheel speed sensor back in. Which again, another little eight millimeter guy. And since we're not going to be using the e-brake cables anymore, the wheel speed sensor cable right where the rubber buffer is here, I'm just gonna zip tie that to the knuckle. So with the FDF bracket in place, you now have the means to mount a Willwood caliper 
opposite of the OEM caliper loaded with pads which you just slide in from the outside it's just a safety pin that comes out and then you can slide the pads in nifty um, yeah then run the lines hard line soft line whatever you choose to do um, and then yeah you're all set for your hydro so right there is where your Wilwood caliper is gonna sit once you go with the dual brackets just gonna go to the parts store fetch me some uh, fasteners real quick to mount these to the brackets and then I can continue with the install run lines and mount the actual hydro in the car